Paul says in the verse we've quoted, every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Now when a woman prays, she's speaking to God. When a woman prophesies, she's speaking for God. So God has said, when you speak to me, or when you speak for me, I want you to have your head covered. Now you might say, God, why? I'm not sure that God is obligated to tell you why. Let me give you a little example. Every June, the Queen of England has a garden party in Buckingham Palace. And certain people are invited. It's, it celebrates her birthday, which is not in June. That's irrelevant. Now, suppose you were invited to the Queen's tea party. And the invitation said, ladies are requested to wear hats and not to wear pants suits. Would you say, the Queen has got no right to tell me what I should wear? I don't believe anybody of you would, would go against that requirement. It would really be an insult to the person who invited you. <laughs> well, God says, if you pray to me or prophesy for me, I want your head covered. Are we able to tell God, God, I don't agree with that? I think it's out of date. See, there's a very, very vital issue. The real basic question is your respect for God. Or do you think God has changed his mind? This is the cultural argument. Well, culture has changed so we don't have to do it. I don't believe that. There's no statement in 1 Corinthians about culture. It's not based on culture. It's based on God's requirements. I say, let God be God. I don't want to appear, <clears throat> what would I say, one-sided, but I think it's a much more important issue than most contemporary Christians realize. As the basic issue is our respect for God. You say, well, I don't understand. Well, maybe you don't understand why the queen doesn't want you to wear a pantsuit. But if she doesn't, you won't do it. If you respect the Queen of England, how much more should you respect Almighty God? What Ruth says is perfectly true, is the church has changed fashions with the world. You don't have to wear a hat. Ruth doesn't wear a hat. I think she looks nice, personally. I don't think she looks silly. In fact, to tell you the truth, I think she looks nicer than a lot of women who don't have their heads covered. I am inclined to think that one of the things that will really release the blessing of God into the church is a respect for God that takes his word seriously. <clears throat> I'm not, you know, uptight about this. I'm a rather relaxed person about dress, as a matter of fact. When I married Ruth, our African daughter said to Ruth, I hope you'll do something about my, where my father dresses. So, I mean, it isn't a matter of I'm the old British stiff upper lip type. It's a question of how seriously do I actually take the scripture. I don't think we can say more about that, except that, well, let's say it all while we're about it. <laughs> Paul says a woman's hair is her glory. Is that out of date? I mean, is it said in a way that implies it only applied in the Roman Empire? There's no suggestion about that. So, you cut your hair, you know what you're doing? You're cutting off your glory. I mean, I'm not saying how long a hair should be, but I'm saying, bear in mind, your hair is your glory. I tell you, I'm being very frank, it costs Ruth quite a lot of labor to keep her hair long. It's more bother to wash it, it's more bother to take care of it, 
It takes more time and more effort. Why does she do it? Because it's her glory. And it's interesting when she goes to have her hair cut or trimmed or whatever, both in Israel and here in Fort Lauderdale, she goes to a very high-class hairdresser. In fact, the one who does our hair and does mine too, used to be a top hairdresser for Elizabeth Arden. He does it now as a favor to us. He's, he's formed a relationship with us. And each of them, when they look at Ruth, they say, thank God for a woman that isn't a carbon copy of every other woman. 